I think I'm one of the two speakers today that don't work for Mapbox. Um, that's it. Um, I've been working with MapGuide for many, many years. I usually work with municipalities and government, a lot of telcos and utilities. A lot of my implementations are within the firewall, not outside. So this, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, basically you you're talk about MapGuide, and we're going to talk about cesium, and then we're going to talk about how they come together. You know, how do you get your peanut butter and their chocolate, and so and vice versa, like Reese's peanut butter cups. Okay. Um, what is MapGuide? That's what I'm going to cover first, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Cesium. Um, it's a GIS server. You install it on Linux or Windows, either one you choose. Um, it runs as a service, a little engine running in the background. Um, it runs as a server on Windows. You can look in the services. There it is, or a daemon in, in Linux. Um, so before you in, go to install it, you, you go to the website, the OSGO site, go to download, and you pick your flavor. It basically Windows or Linux. So you, you have to install it on a website. So you probably have a server or a computer or some, some VPS somewhere that you need to start with. And then once you install it, you can connect to all sorts of data using these FDO feature data objects providers. It's another project that MapGuide uses to talk to data. It can connect directly to ArcSDE, MySQL, ODBC, SDF shapes, WMS, uh, WFS, anything by Google or Ogre, um, Oracle, Spatial, SQL Server, Spatial, and so on. So if you have any of these data sources that just live click connect to it, no translation, no ETL, nothing. You just read it live. There's other third-party items you can get. There's ones from the Autodesk. They, they've got hooks into Oracle and G Small World. And also, if you're using FME, anything that FME can connect to, you can connect to live. Again, basically no ETL. You just hit the data live, and, and you can consume it. So that's the most amazing thing about MapGuide is all the different data types. You don't have to translate. Single source of truth. There's only one data source. Everyone updates, and you point to it. Then you need a web layer. So are you going to use Microsoft IS if you're in a Windows environment, or are you going to use Apache? Those are your two choices. You're going to use IS or Apache. Again, that's part of when you're installing, you're going to have to make that decision. And then what are you going to develop with? So we've got all these choices in the map guide. Before you even install it, you've got all these choices. All right, am I going to use .NET? Am I going to use PHP? Or am I going to use Java? Those are the three languages you get to choose from. And if you go down a path, you can always switch it. It's just an, a little install checkbox, and you can go down. If you don't know what to install when you're installing MapGuide, go with PHP because most of the community has PHP examples. Although there's quite a few uh, .NET and not as much Java, but it's out there. So, so keep that in mind when you're installing it. So now we have a MapGuide server running with a web layer. Okay, what is MapGuide? It's also a browser. Okay, uh, there's a basic AJAX one that's just out of the box, very sim simple, super simple. It's just a map with a legend and some properties. Or there's a fusion, and this fusion is a fusion between MapGuide and open layers. Right now it's 112, I think, right now? Or, yeah, yeah, I think it, or 212, sorry. Um, it's not at 3.0 yet, open layers. It's coming, it's coming. Um, so out of the box, it has open layers, and it's pretty powerful stuff. But how do I make a map? So basically, I've got the server, I've got this, this web engine, do I have to write a bunch of CSS and all? No. There's this magical thing called MapGuide Maestro. It is a very fat client you install on your desktop. Um, it is, it is a DLLs and that, but I've actually had it running on my Mac for years. It works great using Mono. It's, it's great. And, and you use it to make maps. So how do, how do you make maps with it? Let's have a look. First of all, you have to connect the data. So what I'm going to do here is I downloaded a bunch of uh, shape files from San Francisco. And I just point to a directory on my server where they are. I said, OK, there's my shape files. It sees that both shape files in that folder are in a particular coordinate system, and it just picks them. Then I'll make layers out of those shape files. I go in, I point to the shape file, I say, use the building footprint, and so on. And same with this, the city limits. And I use that shape file. I can make a layer, and I can go in and make it whatever color I want. And then I can make a, a map and set the coordinate system, and it does dynamic reprojecting. So if all my shape files are in one, I could, it dynamically reprojects the pseudo Mercator. And then I've got a template like this, where I can choose a pre-canned wrapper to show it on the web. I hit go, 
and then I get a URL on the internet where I can actually go in and look at a map with all my shape files and basically there's my website with uh, full interactive buffering and selecting and background open layers background all sorts of things like that and it's actually pretty much that fast to get a web server going the installs look pretty much next 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 you go in yeah, no programming, zero programming. It's that mature, zero programming. You could basically get a map with all that power, all that selectability without programming. That's, I'm lazy, I don't wanna do any programming. I, don't need, I didn't have to do anything, although you can. Now you got the whole Open Layers API at your fingertips in this wrapper, plus the map guide API on the server side. So you can code it and customize it any way you want. Now if you wanna look at what Maestro looks like, it looks something like this. So here's Maestro when I first start, and here's some of the providers that I have. You know, right away I can say, where's the SDFs or shapes? I can consume WM WFS and WMS and then produce it as well. So it can consume and serve this sort of data. I can bring in anything, uh, if I have Windows, Box, ODBC, anything by GDAL or GR, uh, PostGIS, SQL Server. I don't have the Oracle installed right now, but I can do that, SQLite and so on and plus any of the other third-party ones if you, you can get. So I can connect all those things. And layers, for example, uh, city lots, right? Or let's go into city lots here. In the city lots, I could basically say, you know, it's, I wanna share all the columns in my shape file. Here's all the columns, check them. They're exposed to the internet. So I can view them as properties. Uh, styling, you just basically go into the style. You can say what color, uh, pick a, you know, it's basically like a color brewer type of thing where you can pick any color you want. Um, you can set the transparency on a slider bar, and you can change the edges, fills, all sorts of things, and you can have filters, so you can color code and do all sorts of thematics and that sort of thing based on a column in the shape file or data set. Also, I can completely change it based on scale, so I could say from 0 to 5,000 it's one color, and from 5,000 to 10 it's another, and you just hit click, click, click for every scale, and you can set the min and max scale, so it's all just GUI based, so that's pretty easy to use. And then the maps, you just drag and drop your layers in. You can dynamically reproject. All your layers can come from different coordinate systems that'll dynamically reproject on the fly and just show them. So that's pretty cool that way too. And what I love about the layouts is once you have a map. So basically I went through four things. Connect the data, make layers out of the data, make a map out of the layers, and finally take that map and publish it to the web. And that's a layout. And out of the box it has you know, five or six little layouts here. For example, I have the slate one. If I hit go, it'll open up the map in, this is just the shape files I downloaded from the um, city of San Francisco just last week. And there's all the data there, and there's the background. You can see there's the external providers. There's uh, streets, hybrid terrain, that sort of stuff. And I, if I select on any of the parcels, I think, yeah, there's all the attributes from the buildings just expose any way I want. And there's buffer tools and dynamic measure tools. You can just basically go like this and it's all open layers. It'll tell you the distance, and cumulative distance and stuff like this. So it's all built in. I didn't have to write any code. It's just part of map guide. And if I don't like this slate one, I can go back to Maestro and say, you know, I'd rather publish that maroon one. That's a nicer color. So I hit go and it'll just launch the maroon version and the wrappers over here, things are docked over here, the overview maps over here instead, and so on and all my tools. And I got a full right click menu, zoom pan, red line, everything I wanna do, buffer, it's all built in. So I don't have to write any code for that either. That's really cool. Okay, let's go back. So map guide is, is cool that way, right? It's pretty awesome. Okay, so then I've got this really neat tool called map guide, and then, uh, but it's all 2D. And I said, well, that's all a 2D map. It's got all these wicked tools. But I'd like to see some of my data. Like, I'm streaming from live data. So I may have, I may have elevations. I may have values. I may have all sorts of other information I want to render in a th third dimension. Well, then comes along Cesium. And, and because I'm lazy, I like wizards. I like map guide because I don't have to do anything. I can go next, 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 and everything just happens and I get a nice website I can publish. I needed a tool that's easy to use because I'm super lazy. And because I'm so lazy, I found Cesium. And it's, it's, plus it's awesome. Uh, when I first, someone first said cesium, I was at, in Portland, um, six months ago, and uh, at the Phosphor G there. And I saw the booth and they said, look, we got cool stuff. Cesium, isn't that an element? 55, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so no, it's actually a JavaScript library for 3D maps, it's awesome. It's WebGL and, and HTML5, it's made by AGI, or founded by. It's really 
slick. It's, it, looked, it looked like Google Earth, only no plugin, and all of a sudden I can just put it in my browser without any problem. I was like, well, that's pretty awesome. Um, you know, and then it also had some really cool things, like it had time series. So it's basically could publish data based on time. So, so here are the states, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, as the years go by, you can see each state as it comes into the, in, becomes part of the United States, and eventually I think Hawaii pops in there, yeah. And so on. So there's a time series element to this, which is just really slick. I was like, oh, map guy doesn't have that. Because I'm 3D or the time series. OK, well, let's figure that out. Well, I can stream out GeoJSON from MapGuide in some ways, but, uh, but I needed something better for 3D. And I thought, well, I'm going to call it CZML. Sorry, Canadian. So CZML, OK. Um, and it was the best format. But how do I get CZML out of MapGuide? Well, we'll see how that works. CZML looks like this. So here's, here's a version of CZ, CZML. You know, basically, it it's, looks like, well, it looks a lot like uh, GeoJSON, ex except it's modified for CZM. And uh, well, how, do, how hard was it to make a map? Well, there's the Hello World. I copied and pasted that off the Cesium site. And really, most of the code is right here. There's the JavaScript at the bottom, the, hell, the script, script, that little bold at the bottom. So I copied and pasted that in. Let's just go to the browser. And here. So here's that Hello World I just copied and pasted and stuck in here. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Look at that, right out of the box. I take that little bit of code, and I can put in all sorts of ellipsoids and drape it around and spin around. Well, that's neat. Well, where's the code look like? Well, I went here, I copied and pasted it from the web, and here's the cesium right here. And again, like I said, this is the code I'm looking at right now, and that's all the JavaScript I had to do right there. So well, that's easy. I'm a good copy-paste kind of developer. That's excellent. So that was, that was pretty easy to do. I said, well, how do I integrate this to MapGuide, though? There's, I have this, this boundary. I've got this awesome Cesium product that's so wicked, and I've got MapGuide 2D, and how do I bring them together? How do I get that chocolate and the peanut butter? Well, then I discovered uh, when I was talking on the news group with my, my other people in the MapGuide community, and they said, well, what about MapGuide REST project? This thing could produce anything out of anything. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, this thing is a REST project that actually has all sorts of adapters that will stream anything in MapGuide. So all those data sets I showed you from, from uh, PostGIS to Oracle to Shapefile, out, once MapGuide has that as a layer, a styled layer, it'll stream out as GeoJSON or XML or HTML oh, or CZML. Cool. So I went to the, the GitHub and grabbed this, and I copied and pasted the code into MapGuide. And then I tried it out. And basically, what I could do is by just getting the path of where the layer is. So if I went back into Ma Maestro, oops, here. And I said, OK, well, there's this city lots, for example. And I look at its properties. If I look at the properties of city lots, you'll see it's in a path under library in a folder called San Francisco, in another folder called layers. It's called city lots .layer definition. Well, if I copied that and I, and I paste it into a browser and I said .html, I would get all the HTML features. If I put a .xml at the end of that city lots, I'd get all, those, all that data as XML. But here's the coolest part. If I put GeoJSON in, I could stream out GeoJSON. I thought, well, that's really, really neat. I could do GeoJSON. And then I thought, well, you know, I've always struggled. People always ask, well, how do I put MapGuide in Leaflet? Because, you know, MapGuide's got this open layers wrapper. It's really good. But, but a lot of people want a really simple Leaflet because Leaflet's pretty cool and small. And Well, then, well, it's just GeoJSON streaming with that one URL. So I stuck it in to a real quick uh, GeoJSON page or leaflet with GeoJSON, and then sure enough, it works great. You know, there's my, there's my parcels and city lots coming from GeoJSON. I was like, well, that's pretty cool, and that's all part of the MapGuide REST project. OK, that's neat, and the code's pretty easy. I just basically did this. I put the path of the uh, leaflet, where is it? Right here. And what's really cool about this uh, REST thing is I could say, give me GeoJSON, and also, do a little transform to on the fly, and it will actually transform that data into lat long 84 or whatever coordinate system I need. I thought, well, that's pretty slick. Good, I don't have to do mess around with coordinate systems. Great, OK, that's great. So I just put that in there. OK, but we're still not talking, oops, we're still not talking about uh, cesium. Well, how do I get to cesium? Well, again, I can just change that .geojson to .czml. 
and that's all I did. So I took my hello world and I added um, four lines of code. I copied and pasted this in there. And what happened is I get the data. Oh, there's my lots. They look pretty flat. It's coming from that shape file I got from, from uh, the San Francisco. I was like, but it's in 2D. Their shape files in 2D. Oh, but guess what? There's actually some information about those, those city lots and those buildings. Uh, inside that layer, I can go in and use one of the columns inside the shape file that gives me a sense of how tall, say, the buildings are. So I went in, back into Maestro, and there's actually a little area um, where I can go in and I can set the, you know, the color and all that sort of thing in here. But, um, and I've done, I did that, and I like the way it is, and semi-transparent and that sort of thing. But I can go into this, this area of Maestro and uh, called KML Elevation. And this KML Elevation actually works with cesium too. So if I go in here and I say, okay, get the max height and minimum height columns from that shape file I found and just make it relative to whatever the ground is. So I take the max height and minimum. There are just two columns in the shape file I happen to find, and I stuck them in there. And you can do all sorts of math and functions in here. There's every mathematical function you want can put in there. And I stuck it in there. I said relative to ground, and the units are in feet. And then save it. Then I basically stick it inside of Maestro and uh, or save it and, and then I open it up inside of um, IE. Well, this is what the code looks like. If I go back to the code, basically those buildings, like I said, I only had to add these four lines of code. And again, there's the footprint. So if I look at that in Maestro, let's actually look at the footprint layer in Maestro. All I had to do is go in here say the camel elevation, and sure enough, set the, what I just showed you, and then I look it up, and I look it in the browser, and there's my footprint should be right here, and there's my building footprint. So I can just basically do this and scroll around and look at all the footprints, and there's all the buildings in JavaScript, you know, streaming from MapGuide inside of, and I, I pick on a building, and what I did is I exposed the height. So how did I get that height as a little label? Well, in, in Maestro, map guide, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is go to this parameter called the tooltip. Because Maestro allows me to get hyperlinks on every single feature. Dynamically, I can just build a hyperlink. I can put a filter, dynamic filter, just filter things basically from any value. And I also can build a tooltip with uh, basically a little command called concat. Well, there's a wizard in here just to show you. And I say concatenate a height and put the, the height in there and put feet at the end. I just built that little thing. So when I went back into here, when I pick on something, it'll just say height. And I can do all sorts of rounding and put little feet symbols and things like that. It's quite easy to do. OK, well, then that's cool. I've got 3D buildings. That's really neat. OK, let's go back here. And again, I'm transforming to latlong84. So again. Four lines of code, that's great, because I'm lazy. I'd rather copy and paste. I can get three, three things out of map guide with four lines of code. I'm happy. I'm lazy. Uh, but then I thought, well, you know what? I, I actually went on back up onto the San Francisco website, and I saw that they had last year's updated assessment. And they had house pricing. And I said, well, wouldn't that be cool to make the properties height represent the price of the, of the house. So I can have a 3D rendering of house prices, not actual physical <laughs> building heights, but actually show the height of the house based on the price of it. So I basically took the house price and I put a little bit of math in here. I said divide by 10,000 because I didn't want, you know, <laughs> $10 million properties going 10 million feet high in, you know, in, the, in the air. So I did, I just put in a fudge, like a little fudge factor in there and said, uh, and I even put meters just so it was a little smaller. And sure enough, you know, when I do that, and I, oh, all I have to do is look at the, uh, there's the property values there, and I can zoom in. And if I pick on one, there it is there, and it's, that's the street, and that was the assessed value. Again, I didn't bother. I was just really, like I said, I'm kind of lazy, so I just stuck in the value. And it looks like this if I go back into Maestro and look at the assessment parcels. I built the, uh, the tooltip right there. I said the street, assessed at, 
Oh, I put a carriage return on the backslash end. That's a little trick I learned. So that was easy to do. Okay. That was easy enough, right? So to go from the beginning to the end, so the first thing you need to do is, is before you even start, is say, where is MapGuide going to be installed? Now, here's the cool thing. MapGuide does have a, a Docker container. I've been playing with that a little bit. So if you've got a cloud, cloud uh, set up and you just, want, you just type in uh, MapGuide Docker, you can stick it in. We, we did it yesterday. It works pretty, pretty slick. Uh, so you can do that. Or if you have a server that you've got set up, basically a VPS somewhere or, or DigitalOcean somewhere, you can download MapGuide, get installed. Then you need MapGuide on your desktop. So uh, because it is, um, it's a Windows application, you're going to need Mono if you want to run it on your Mac or Linux. And, I, and like I said, I run MapGuide, MapGuide on my Mac, and it runs pretty well. Or Maestro on my Mac, and it runs pretty well. So Because uh, Maestro is the fat client, right? Ma Maestro is the fat client. MapGuide server is running away, but Maestro is the fat client. And then you need to put the GS files somewhere the server can see, right? So they need to be either moved up, FTP, or put, point to a server, whatever. You need your data somewhere the server can see. You use Maestro to make the layers. You download Map, MapGuide REST from, from the GitHub, and you just basically paste it into the folder where MapGuide's installed. You download Cesium and put that on a folder, or you can point to the live JS libraries. And then you modify the Hello World with those four lines I just showed you. That's it. That's all I did to get this working. In fact, from the beginning to end, it was only a couple hours from the time I installed MapGuide from scratch to having those parcels showing in 3D and, and cesium. So really, it was only a couple hours to have from, from no software installed to having that on a, on a site that I can show you. So that's pretty, pretty easy to, to run through. I want to give you some links. Um, I know I'm done super fast. I tend to do that, but I'll have lots of time. Um, here are some links. You can download MapGuide from mapguideosgo.org. Uh, 2.6 is the current release. 3.0 is on the way uh, for MapGuide. Uh, there's Maestro. You can go to the Maestro wiki, download that. The MapGuide REST is at GitHub, actually. That's, um, and Cesium, you can go to the Cesium up and running. That's where, actually, I just went to that Cesium site up and running, copy and paste that page, and just added those three lines, and it just worked. And the news group, I usually go to Nabaldi's, the news group there. OK. Um, I've got lots of time for questions because I went through pretty fast. I thought I'd be a lot, take a lot longer, but I tend to talk fast. So, uh, any any questions? Has anyone tried MapGuide before? Whoa. Okay. See few. That's great. Why? Well, I I uh, I see a lot of uh, people out there that 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 would love to try it. Why don't you just download, give it a go, see how it works on your, on your computer. If you do install it, okay, if you do install on your local machine at work or on your desktop, uh, remember that uh, a lot of the examples show localhost, and I'm assuming everyone knows localhost, but you'd be surprised on the news groups. People say, well, I try localhost from my own computer. It doesn't work, but it works on the server. So localhost is a magic phone number to call yourself. Right? That's what I tell people. It's like, it's like, it's like 127001. It's a magic phone number to call yourself. So when the examples show localhost in the examples, don't use it. Put the name of the computer in there. Yeah, you had a question. Yeah, I was wondering what the, um, uh, kind of what the performance is like, depending on how, many, how much geometry you're trying to do. Oh, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> that's a good question, because I'll show you. In the map itself, like for example here, Actually, that one wasn't too bad. I think it was the, the buildings for the entire city of San Francisco. You will see that I actually had to um, crop it. I only cropped a little pie out. And that performance wasn't, oops, I'll go back. That performance wasn't um, from necessarily from uh, cesium. Cesium dealt with it great. Once, once it was cached, once it was loaded into the browser, it rocked. What took the time? was you take this, um, this California state plane shapefile. OK, it's rendered in map guide. It's transformed to lat long. It's then turned into C CZML and then streamed to you directly. So all, that, all those processes take a bit of time. And that's why I only, I only queried a subset. 
Now, there's some things I could do. I could take my core data and put it into a coordinate system that I'm going to be using, like, like Latlong or, or Spherical Mercator. That would speed things up significantly. Um, there's other ways of doing of caching as well. Also, what I forgot to say is the MapGuide REST project also supports um, uh, uh, vector tiles. So you can actually use vector tiles in MapGuide and just render anything in MapGuide out as vector tiles through the MapGuide REST project. It's, so, it's the slickest project ever. I think MapGuide should actually uh, bundle the MapGuide REST sub-project as part of it because it's just so awesome. It's, uh, I, I, I can't do anything. I do so much jQuery auto lookups and things like that, hitting the live data through MapGuide using, using MapGuide REST that, um, that I, just, I, I just can't even live without the MapGuide REST connector. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. It'd probably be a lot faster for sure. Yeah, yeah. As as a service from from MapGuide REST, definitely. Yes, yeah. It's now CZM I know can take uh, uh, top. Well, there's the next talk after is, is on. And yeah. So so the, any more real technicals? Yeah. Because I cut like I said, I copy and paste four lines. That was my experience in CZM. It was that easy for me to get something going. If you really want the technical guy, he's going to be up right after this session. So that's so he'll t he'll take it from from there. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about that? About map guide and yeah? That's a good question. I think I don't see why not. I haven't tried it yet, but I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah, that's a great yeah. And and because they're standard, I mean, depending on how you build them, you could probably build them using map guide and using other tools to to cache them. So so you can you can make a you can add some more things to the stack to actually get a, a more robust uh, caching of the vector tiles for sure. Yeah. Actually, I think I'm almost right on time anyway. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all for coming, and uh, good luck with MapGuide and Cesium. Yeah.